Good morning, good morning. I greet you in the marvelous name of Jesus here at the Steeplechase Baptist Church, located at 1716 Steeplechase Plaza Drive, under the awesome leadership of Dr. Pastor Antonio T. Dixon, Sr. I am Deacon Washington. I'll be bringing you the Sunday School Overview this morning. It's another glorious day. And we just want to give God the glory and the praise. Amen. Our lesson today is entitled, The Word Saves. The Word Saves. And our lesson text comes from John chapter 12, verses 44 through 50. John chapter 12. Verse 44 through 50. Amen. And in our lesson text, we got two outlines. It says, look into Jesus with the eyes of faith and heeding Jesus' word with a believing heart. Amen. Two wonderful outlines. Let us say a quick word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for another day of your grace and mercy. As we look on your word today, dear Heavenly Father, and let it meditate within our hearts to understand who you are and what you have done for us. We just want you to help us to be better disciples for you. We ask it all in your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, we, and we're going to continue on talking about Jesus. We know that Jesus, we've been, we've been talking about Jesus on his public ministry. You know, today we call it street witnessing, to our street ministry, going out, on, going out on the highways and the byways and preaching to the people that don't know who Jesus is. And, uh, and today we're going to be talking about Jesus is wrapping it up. So he's coming to the end. He's been out for three years preaching and teaching and healing the sick and doing all type of miracles and wonders and and. and and even out of all the things that he's done thus far, up until this point, we still got people that don't believe. We still have people that don't understand who he is. You know, we, we, we still got people, you know, walking around talking about Jesus is just another man, just another prophet. You know, he's nothing of significance. Out of all that he's done within the past three years, we still have the audacity to discredit Jesus. And even in this here, and we'll see here, you know, and, and, and they consider this Jesus' last sermon, because after this, you really, John, after this, according to John, you know, Jesus didn't say anything else, you know, other than when he came back and he talked to his disciples only, you know, to give them what they needed. But this was his last sermon before he was getting ready to, to, to do what he did, to do what he was going to do while he came here. You know, he was getting ready to walk, you know. And this was his last sermon, and it was his last sermon to get the people to understand who he is and what he's doing for us, what he has done for us, and what he's going to do for us, and all this good stuff. And this is, even in the midst of the, of the, of the, the people that's getting ready to try to capture him and, and, and take him to the courts and have him tried for blasphemy and all of this good stuff. He's still out preaching and teaching about God, about who he is, about why he came, about what he's doing. And this is what we need to understand out of the lesson today. Like I said, this is the end of Jesus' public ministry. You know, three years of, of street witnessing, street healing, street miracle. Miracles and wonders is it, it, coming to a close. And, 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 and we are still today asking the question, who is Jesus? And this is what we're going to talk about today in today's lesson, who Jesus is. So we don't, we don't want to be confused anymore. We, we want a we clear understanding who Jesus is. And uh, let us read our first outline today, starting at 44. Then Jesus cried out. Whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. 
The one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Amen. Amen. You know, in the book it says, for three years Jesus conducted his public ministry. You know, he, among his fellow Jews, amazing, despite all the Jews taunting numerous miracles to the nation of whole, that they still had a problem with him being the Messiah. And so Jesus now is, is, is telling you who he is, what he's doing. And when we look at these first first three outlines, we can see right here is that, 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 that Jesus is trying to get us to receive him. You know, this is what you need to do. You need to come to me now. You need to come to me. If you believe in me, you also believe in the one who sent me. See, Jesus, the, the argument is, well, Jesus ain't God, and Jesus, well, Jesus is God's representative. Jesus is God. Whatever Jesus done, God told him to do it. However Jesus walked, God told him to walk that way. Jesus never took credit for anything that he did. Everything he did, he always said he, he did it. He's about his father's business. It wasn't about him. He knew it wasn't about him. It was all about God and God himself. And what he's trying to tell everybody is when you see him, you see my father. There's no difference in the two of us. <laughs> we the same. It's kind of like it's kind of like me. When you look at my son, when you see Scooter, you see me. I ain't no, and I can't even dispute that he ain't mine. There ain't no way I can say that he ain't my son. Man, I ain't no way I can say that. You know, <laughs> that's 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 me. Like father, like son. That's what Jesus is trying to tell you right here. Like father, like son. I ain't, I'm not doing anything on my own recognizance. My authority comes from the father. Just like a king when he have a son, he has a prince. The prince ain't got no authority. He may have some, 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 some rights more than everybody else. But the authority comes from the king. So when you see the prince, you ain't necessarily scared of the prince. You scared of the king. Because you know if you mistreat the prince, you got to answer to the king. But that's the same thing here with Jesus. But Jesus ain't no prince. Jesus trying to tell you him and the father, they are, they are entwined. There's some solidarity right here between me and my father. <laughs> There's no difference. But don't get it messed up. All the authority... All the healing that I did, all of the sick that I saved, and all of the people, whatever I done, it was by the authority of my Father. So if you believe in me, that means you believe in him. And the good news about it is, I can't believe, say I believe in God and don't believe in Jesus. Because they go together. You can't separate them. I don't care what you're trying to do. You cannot separate Jesus and God. They are intertwined. Now, just like us, we need oxygen, oxygen to breathe. If we ain't got no oxygen, ain't no breathing going on. But it's intertwined within us. <laughs> you know, we, that's the way it is. And that's the same thing with Jesus. and They are intertwined. They go together. You mess with one, you mess with both. You know, that's how we used to say on the block, you mess with me, you got to deal with my whole family. What Jesus is trying to tell us right there, if you want to go to heaven, it starts right here. It starts with me. It starts with me, it's going to end with me. I came to the world this time to save, to fulfill the law. To redeem you, to make atonement for your sin, to save you from your sin. That's what I've done. That's my mission this time. Now, when I come back, I got a different mission. 
I got a different mission when I come back. Because my mission now is to save you, atone for your sins, save you from your sins, bring you out of the darkness into the light. Because I'm all about the light. There's no darkness in me. None whatsoever. And that's what Jesus is doing. And he, he said, Jesus and the Father are one. If you see me, you see the Father. You know, what he's teaching, he's teaching what the Father told him to teach. He said, the one who looks at, he said, I have come into the world as light so that no one believes in me should stay in darkness. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, you should not be sinning anymore. Because, remember, sin puts you in darkness. When you get disconnected from God, you're in the dark because you can't see. You can't see. Remember the blind man. He was blind. He couldn't see Jesus, but he knew when Jesus was walking by. See, he's, he, 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 he saw the light coming by, but he was blind. And Jesus said, do you want to see? And the blind man could see. He, he, he saw the light, even though he was blind. That is what Jesus does for us. When we get connected to him, when we fully commit and convict our heart that following the teachings of Jesus is the way we are supposed to go, our lives will change forever. There are things we will be able to do that the only person can get the glory is God. Now remember, Jesus is this, you know, like I said, this, this, according to John, this is his last sermon. After this, you know, he's, he's going on trial. After this, he's, he's going to the upper room. He's going he gonna to have his last deal with, the, with, his, with his boys, you know. And, you know, John, you know, well, John was his boy, you know. It was him and John was tight, you know. And uh, after that, he's going to get captured. He's going to go to court. And he gonna, you know, so he, he's on his way. But he's got to get his last sermon for all the ones that's still confused about who he is. Even in today's time, we are confused about who Jesus is. The argument, is he a God? Is he God? And now, he is God. They are one. You know, the argument is, well, if he's God, why did he die? God don't die. You know, that's some of the Israelites and Jews. That's their argument. Well, that was the, that was the, the purpose. See, he had to die because that's how we got the atonement, right, right? Because remember, back in the day, you had to sacrifice some lamb, lamb and all that for your tongue. That, he had to do that. He, he, but he came back to life. He had to do that too. To show he had all power. There's nothing sin can do to him. He's the one. And that's what we need to understand. You know, Jesus ain't never claimed that he was God and I'm God. He never done that. He never took the glory for what the Father did. Never. Everything he did, he made it abundantly clear. I do what my Father has commanded me to do. All my power and authority comes from him. Not me. He sent me down here. I am of his essence. His compassion, his, this is him, what you see in me, is you see him. That's why, that's why he can say this. The word was God, and the word was with God. And that is what Jesus is preaching to us, the word of God, and the word is with God. That's, that's, that's it. That is Jesus, that is the solidarity that him and the Father has. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And, and we got to get to the point where we stop disrespecting him, trying to compare him to Moses. 
Elijah. They just prophets. Paul. They just prophets. Jesus is more than a prophet. He ain't even in that category. We can't even put Jesus in that category as a prophet. But yet in the dead and still, we got people, if you ask them a question, who is Jesus? I don't know. I don't know. As a man, we know that, you know, was sent down from heaven, God's son. You know, they just throw something out there, but they don't truly know who he is. They, they, don't, they don't get it. They don't get it. And, and the Jews had a problem because he wasn't the Messiah that they wanted him to be. They wanted, they wanted selfish benefits from him. Because remember back in the day, they stayed in their little cliques. They didn't really venture off. But remember, Jesus went all over Judea. He preached to everybody. Jews, Gentiles, Samarians. He don't care if y'all was feuding, having a war together. He was preaching to everybody. Because he said the word is for everybody. I need you to understand that. Because when I leave, the word goes out to everybody. Not just a certain group. Not just to my people. Everybody. And when everybody get the word, get the news, then I'll be on my way back. But it's to everybody. So, so, so Jesus here is his last sermon, and he's trying to get the people to receive him. It's time out for all this foolishness. Now, I've been down here preaching and teaching to y'all for three years, and y'all still don't got a problem. I don't understand. You follow me around like I'm Houdini. I ain't, I ain't performing magic tricks. I'm giving people life, everlasting life. You ain't seeing me doing wish potions to heal folks. He told the man, what, Larry, we just go, go, go home. Your son okay, go on home. That's how he just spoke the word. And before the man could get home, they met him halfway. He's alive. When you put your faith in Jesus, the only thing you can gain is life. And that's what he's telling you. Him and the Father is one. You can't separate the two. You can't believe in one and not the other. It don't go that way. Like I said, if we want to breathe, we got to have oxygen. No oxygen, no breath. No Jesus, no God, no heaven. We got to get it together. All right, let's read the last verses, 47 through 50. If anyone hears my word but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very word I have spoken will condemn, will condemn them at the last day. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that, he co I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. So, so, so now this is the part where the people is rejecting Jesus. You know, you know, Jesus trying to get stop rejecting me. Because if you do, come if you continue, some repercussions. There's some repercussions. If anyone hears my word but does not keep, now I do not. Now understand what I say. This time, he didn't come to judge. He came to save a dying world. He made atonements for our sins. He gave us another opportunity to make it into heaven. This time, this was his purpose. And he's gone away. 
Now, when he comes back, he's got a different purpose. That's what he's telling you here. <laughs> I, you can reject me right now. And I, I'm, I ain't, hey, ain't going to judge you right now. I'm just going to keep preaching to you. Change your wicked ways. Commit to me. Commit to the teachings of Jesus Christ. I, while you still have breath in your body, you still have a chance to change from your wicked way. But when I leave, you know, that's what it's trying to tell you. And I come back, I got something for you. Kind of like when you're growing up, you know, when, when, you, when your parents go off to work, and, you know, my mama, she was real good at that, leaving you alone, especially in the summertime, leaving you a long list of chores to do. <laughs> now, now, before I get home from work, I need these chores done. Now, I ain't going to chastise you right now. I'm just going to, you know, my incentive is that <laughs> they need to be done before I get home. Now, I can do them if I want to. <laughs> or I can stay in my wicked ways and not do them. But when she get home and those chores is not done, it's a different purpose. And I got the answer for why I was disobedient why I thought I was big and bad enough <laughs> to disobey you. You know, you know, you know. So, so that's what Jesus is trying to tell you. You can act up right now. You all right? You still got a chance to get it right. You know, I could have acted up, you know, sister here. I could have acted up for, you know, four, five hours. I could have said I ain't doing nothing. But I would have had three hours, you know. You know what? I, I came to my senses. Let me get in and get these chores done. I, you know, I could have. <laughs> I could have got them done real fast, you know. I could, I didn't come to my senses there, I didn't come to my senses, you know. But you know, but sometimes we don't come to our senses. And and God is trying to tell you when he, when Jesus is trying to tell you when he come back, you ain't came to your senses. Mm. I got something for you. You ain't gonna be happy. You ain't gonna be happy. And trust me, I wasn't happy when my parents had the discipline for me. I wasn't happy, you know. You know, I wasn't happy with my mom disciplining me. But if she ever told my daddy, ooh, that was real bad. I, was, I done really messed up then. I took it just a little bit too far. She going to tell daddy. And you know daddy wasn't happy working 12 hours in the steel mill, hot. And the first thing you get home meals, child been acting up all day. That ain't nothing they want to hear. <laughs> I can tell you from my own experience, ain't nothing I want to hear. Uh, dealing with uh, people with eccentric attitudes all day. And then I get home, I got to deal with two more that think their attitude is better than anybody else's. Yeah, so it just ain't a good thing. So Jesus is trying to tell them, hey, you can reject me right now. But my purpose when I come back is going to be a different story. And understand what I'm telling you. I'm telling you what the Father told me to tell you, not me. I ain't telling you nothing different than what the Father tells you. Pastor Dixon sit up here and preach on Sunday. He ain't telling us what Pastor Dixon won't tell us. He's telling us what God has put on his heart to tell us on Sunday. Because if he's telling us what he want to tell us, everybody in here that's a true belief in Christ We'll know he's not telling the truth. And we have to study the word because today's time is confusing. Social media will take stuff and twist it on you. And if you don't understand the truth, you'll believe the lie. They took Colin Kaepernick social justice movement and turned it into disrespecting veterans. How did we go from social justice to disrespecting the veterans? But that's what social media does. And that's what people are doing today. They trying to discourage you about if Jesus was alive, why he letting all this happen? He ain't letting it, we letting it happen. You got a choice. You didn't have to pull that trigger to kill nobody. You didn't have to make that decision. You had a choice. But you took that choice. It wasn't Jesus that told you. We got to stop blaming 
Jesus and God for our misconducts. But that's what they do. And that's what social media does. Social media, it, it, it'll confuse you if you don't know. And people will lie to you. Straight up. We got to understand, and, and, and this is good lesson today, you know, because, hey, we can receive them or we can re continue to reject them. That's up to us. Jesus is telling us that. What I'm telling you is what my father told me to tell you. My father, your father, everybody's father. And we got to understand that, that people is going to discourage us every day. That's why we got to study the word. That's why we got to come to Sunday school. That's why we got to come to church. That's why we got to go to Bible study. If we can do everything else, surely we can give God the time he deserves. We are just so disrespectful toward God. Everything is more important than him. The world has more clout in our lives than God does. But the world can't give us what God can give us. The world haven't gave us what God has already given us. And it ain't even come close. But we still stand for the world before we'll stand for God. We have lived through a whole pandemic. Pandemic then took out millions of people. And we still talking about Joe Biden. Joe Biden can't save me. He can't get me into heaven. He can't even stop this pandemic. The only thing he can do is make decisions. The sad thing about it is, he looked to those senates and house of representatives and congress, all of them for an answer. When he should pray first and get his answer there and let them know what we're going to do. See, that's the problem. They're sitting at the round table discussing what to do. And ain't nobody asking the man who can take care of everything just by speaking. All he got to do is say, pandemic, go. That's, that's all he got to do. But we got to find a cure. We got to get this. We got to. We got to blame folks. We got to take it out on people. And the answer is, is, is right there in our house, sitting on the shelf with dust on it, because we, we, we don't want to open and read it. Man, what I'm going to do today. So over there, got the dust on, go blow the dust out, read the Bible. If you ain't got nothing else to do, read the Bible. <laughs> if you ain't got nothing else to do, you know, they, they say if you ain't got nothing else to do, you don't know nothing else chapter to read in the Bible, read uh, John and Romans. <laughs> you can read John and Roman and get saved. Now, that's what they say. But if you ain't got nothing to do, read the Bible. I know it beats getting a gun, driving down the road, shooting, killing folks. I know it beats stealing. I know it beats running over folks because you texting and driving. Anything beats what we're doing now. Jesus, you know, we, we, they've argued about who Jesus is. Jesus is telling you, me and the Father is one. There's no separation. Just like in what, what, what's in the uh, chemistry, all that stuff, trying to separate a, uh, Adam and all that stuff, them, you, you, some atoms you can't separate, you know, no matter what you do. You can't split it, you know. You know, I ain't the greatest in all that, but I just, you know, you know, when you read, you understand what things say. That it, it can't be split, you know. Those, those protons and neutrons and things, you know, they, they can't be split. But that's what Jesus is trying to tell us. <laughs> you, you can't separate us. You can't split us up. You can't, 
You can't come between us. You can't do nothing but receive us as your Lord and Savior. That's all you can do and gain eternal life. Or you can continue to do what you're doing, reject me, and gain eternal condemnation. Jesus is God intertwined. The solidarity between them two can't be separated. Jesus came the first time. His purpose was to save a dying world, to atone for our sins, and give us another opportunity to make it into heaven. Now, we got from the time he left to the time he come back to get ourselves together so we can go to heaven. Or we can continue to do what we're doing, and we can go the other way. Your choice, God gave you the choice, and you ain't going to be able to blame nobody but yourself if you don't make it into heaven. Can't blame nobody. Can't blame Jesus. Can't blame God for why you're sitting in me to hell. I ain't you sent yourself there on your own merits. You know, kind of like a job. I want to get promoted. I need to get some credentials on my job. My merits going to get me promoted. I got a college degree now. I got my master's degree. All that's merits so I can make more money. You know, it works, the, it works in the opposite way, too. If I'm on the job stealing all the supplies, and, and then they can get me fired. Same thing with God. You can get your merits, go to heaven, or you can get those demerits and go the other way. Amen? Amen. Outstanding lesson. All right, Sister Dixon. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody on this great Sunday morning? <laughs> I hope everyone has had a blessed week and even better weekend. Um, I'm so glad to be back, glad to see you all here this morning. Um, does anybody have any uh, reports or prayer requests um, this morning? Any updates on any of our um, any of our members that are at home sick or hospital? Anything? What Deacon's need at with our report? <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Deacon Washington, come back in here. He he may know. Um, but I just want to extend um, gratitude on behalf of Pastor Dixon. Um, yesterday he was celebrated for his accomplishments, as we all know, getting his doctorate. So I just want to extend gratitude for uh, everyone that was able to attend in person. And I know if you weren't able to make it, you wish you would have been able to make it. And I know you were there in spirit. And so we, we appreciate um, all the love that you have shown him, not just right now, but just, you know, throughout his, his years here and being supportive of him and, and doing the things that he needs to do to, to accomplish what he has, uh, you know, to the glory of God and for the building of God's kingdom. So if we don't have any prayer requests or reports in, in, or anything like that, then um, <clears throat> me and this old voice are going to do our best to lift up the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Dear gracious Father, we come to you on this morning, God. We just come to you now as humble as we can as humble as we know how god and we just want to stand before you god recognizing um that we are not perfect that we are not without sin that we make mistakes and and we disappoint you and we fail you on the daily but we just want to come to you on this morning god and just to pour out our hearts and and just to let you know how grateful we are for for being your children, God. We we just want to spend some time with you this morning and just to share with you how thankful we are for you being God. We just want to thank you for 
for you allowing us to see another day that we've never seen before god another day that was not promised a day that we don't deserve but god you saw fit to give us another chance and god we just want to say thank you lord we thank you for how you watched over us last night while we were sleeping god we thank you that while we rested you allowed us to do so peacefully we thank you that as we slept you continue to work things out for our good on our behalf lord we just want to thank you for being a god of peace peace for being a god of rest god we thank you that while we were sleeping that you were watching over our household our loved ones god those that we worry about that sometimes keep us up at night and cause us to toss and turn god we thank you for taking care lord we thank you that when you woke us up this morning god and you touched us with a finger of love god that you breathed breath back into our bodies and we just want to say thank you we thank you that when we open our eyes god that we were able to see that we were able to see that everything was the way that we left it when we went to sleep god we thank you that when we got up this morning we were able to put one foot in front of the other god that we were able to have the activity of our limbs we thank you that you woke us up in our right mind with a reasonable portion of health and strength. God, we just come to you on this morning and we don't want to take anything for granted, God. We don't want to leave anything out. So we just come this morning, God, pouring out our hearts of gratitude for all that you have done for us. We honor you on this morning, God, for protecting us from danger seen and unseen. God, we thank you for protecting us from everything that the enemy has planned to kill, steal, and destroy us with, God. We thank you that even when the enemy was working, God, that you kept us, God. That you put a, put a hedge of protection around us, God. That you encamped your angels all about our homes and all about our children, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you put a roof over our heads, God. There's so many, Lord, that are without home, without a place to sleep, without clothes and without food, God. So we thank you for being the provider of everything that we need, for being our source of everything that we could ever imagine, God. We thank you, Lord. God, you didn't have to do it, but you did. You continue to bless us day in and day out god as we we fail you god we don't recognize you we don't honor you in the way that we should but still god you allow your grace and your mercy to be our portion and we thank you lord we thank you for peace that surpasses all understanding god when life circumstances come to rock us oh god we thank you that we're able to go through and come out better than we were before. God, we thank you for those things that we felt were uncomfortable, the things that we didn't like, the things that we thought were too painful, and we didn't understand why, Lord. We thank you for even those things, because we understand how everything works together for our good, God. We recognize that we realize, God, that you waste nothing, that everything is necessary for us to grow and develop and be shaped into you and into who you would have us to be. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We cannot say thank you enough, God, for everything that you have done for us, for all the blessings that you continue to pour down on us day in and day out. God, we honor you for your healing, for your deliverance, for your forgiveness, for just being God all by yourself. We thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made on our behalf. We thank you for a love that is like no other God. We thank you for being the lover of our soul. God, we thank you that your word tells us that there's nothing we can do that you would take your love away from us, that we can't go too far, that your love cannot reach us, God. That you would reach down, oh God, and pull us out. God, we thank you that even now while we're praying, God, that you're able to hear our hearts, oh God, that sometimes we don't know the right words to say. We don't have the right words. And we thank you that we have an intercessor.
intercessor that intercedes on our behalf when sometimes all we can say is Jesus. We thank you that you know what we mean, oh God, that you see our hearts and you understand. And you know what we need before we can even open our mouth. We thank you that we're, that we're able to come to you in prayer and spend this time with you, God. And to be honest and to bear our souls, God. Oh God, we do love you on this morning. So many reasons to be thankful on this morning, God. You've given us a new day, another opportunity to praise your name, to worship you, to show our gratitude, God, to be better than we were before. And we're so undeserving, so we thank you on this morning for not giving up on us, for being patient, for being faithful, God, even in our unfaithfulness, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for how you continue to watch over our children. Help us, God. Lead us and guide us as we try to raise them up in the way that you would have them to go. As school time draws nearer, God, we're beginning now to pray for our children, to, to pray over their school year, God. We're asking, oh God, that you would touch their minds, oh God, so that they would be able to perform in the way that they need to, oh God. We're asking that you would refresh their minds, God, for whatever knowledge that they may have lost over the summer, God. We're asking and praying that they would be able to retain that information, God, and to retain new information. God, we're asking that when they go into these schools, that they would represent you, that they would remember, God. That even though we cannot be with them, that you are always present. God, we're asking that you would watch over them, that they would be the example, that they would be leaders, oh God, that they will understand that they are the head and not the tail, God, that you have called them to be above and not beneath, oh God, that you called them to be set apart, oh God. We're asking, oh God, that you would help them not to fall into peer pressure, God, but to pride themselves on being different to be proud to be called children of God. We're asking, oh God, they would, that they would allow your light to shine through them. That even as children, people would want to know what is making them act the way that they do. Be different, God. Cover our children right now in the name of Jesus. God, and then I pray for those that are around them, God, that they would be influenced by our children, that they would want to follow after our children, God. We're praying for the staff, for the teachers, for the administration, God. For those that are, that are responsible for our children throughout the day, God. We're praying for their minds, oh God, for their spirits, oh God. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus, God. That as they teach our children, that they would do so in a way that is pleasing unto you. God, I thank for each and every member of Steeple Chase Baptist Church, God. But without them, oh God, and without you, there would be no Steeple Chase. So God, I'm praying a special prayer for each and every individual in this house. Everyone that makes up this place, God, I'm praying for each and every person, God. Whatever it is that they're standing in the need of, oh God, for unspoken and spoken prayer requests, God, I'm asking that you would do it right now in the name of Jesus. God, if it's marriages that need to be healed, delivered, and touched, God, I'm speaking life right now in the name of Jesus. God, where the enemy has come to try to destroy marriage, oh God, we know, oh God, that marriage honors you and he hates to see what you have put together. So God, I'm asking that you would move in a mighty way, God. you can, God. Let their testimony be that God did it. God, I'm praying for every member that might be sick, that might be hurting, oh God. That might be, be having an issue with their health. God, I'm asking that you would touch their body right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, that healing may be their portion, oh God. Strengthen them where they need to be strengthened, oh God. Whether it be in faith, whether it be in their body, touch right now in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, I'm speaking healing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, God. I'm asking that you would strengthen those who are looking after them, who are caring for them, God. Be their strength right now in the name of Jesus. Because 
because your word tells us that you are our strength when we're weak, God. So I'm asking for you to do what only you can do, God. Father God, when it looks like we don't know how this thing is going to work out, God, I'm asking that you would do the impossible, God. I'm asking that you would blow our minds. I'm asking that you would make a way where there's no way, God. Do what only you can do, God. We're trusting you on this morning. We're believing you on this morning. God, we're honoring you on this morning. We're praising you right now for answering our prayers, God. Oh, God, we lift you up, God. We bless your holy and your magnificent name, God. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your healing power, for your delivering power, for being a provider, for being our protection, God. For being the lover of our soul, for being our friend, for being our father, our mother, God, everything that we need, God, we thank you that we can find it in you, God. Oh, God, I'm praying for financial blessings, oh, God, when it looks like our ends won't meet, God. I'm asking that we will put our trust in you, Lord, that you would give us what we need. We thank you on this morning, God, for how you have kept us these past few years, God, as we have lived through this pandemic, God, we thank you for keeping us, God. Even when some of us have dealt with sickness, we thank you for healing our bodies. We thank you for healing our loved ones' bodies. We thank you, God, for keeping our minds, Lord. It can seem so hard to keep our minds stayed on you. It can seem so hard to keep ourselves from falling apart. But God, if we just lean on you, if we just depend on you, if we just keep our mind on you, your word tells us to think of those things that are lovely. So God, help us to keep our minds stayed on you, God. To keep our focus on you to continue to pray, to continue to praise your holy name, even when it looks bleak, God. We will continue to trust in you, God. There's nothing that we can't do when we have you, God. God, we are nothing without you. And we thank you for everything that you've done for Steeple Chase, God, everything that you are doing for us right now, God, we thank you, God. We thank you for how you're moving in the life of Bubba Raspberry, God, and we continue to pray for him. We continue to lift him up, God. We continue to ask, oh God, that you would have your way in him, have your way in his life, God, wherever he needs you to bless him, God. We're standing here on his behalf, oh God, lifting him up in prayer, oh God, that you would continue to move on his heart so that he can be a blessing to the steeplechase family. God, we thank you for keeping our doors open. God, we just want to honor you on this morning for the man of God that you have blessed us with. Lord, we thank you for all that you have enabled him to do and accomplish. We thank you for what he has taught us, how he has toiled, how he has sacrificed. We thank you, God, and we ask that as he comes to us this morning, God, and he pours out what you have given him, God, we ask that you would pour back into him, that you would reveal him, God, that you would replenish him, God. And God, and for his faithfulness, God, we ask that you would pour him out blessings that he won't have room to receive, God. Touch him now, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. Help us to, to play our part and, and do what we need to do to help the man of God. To be followers, oh God, to follow the vision that you have given him. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor you, Lord. There's nothing that we cannot do without you, God. We thank you. We bless you and we lift you up on this morning. It's in your darling son Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen.
grateful, God, our Father, we we first say thank you for waking us this morning. For giving us activity in our limbs, breath in our bodies, and then giving us a mind to come to the house of prayer one more time. We're thankful for another day of life, knowing that we may not have everything we want, but we have what we need. We thank you for grace and we thank you for mercy. We thank you for protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Most of all, we say thank you for Jesus. We thank you for salvation. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for giving us another chance. How somebody wants to know how did you give us another chance you died on the cross you shed your blood that we might be forgiven now God we ask your blessings upon this worship experience we ask God, that you would bless those who will assemble themselves in this sanctuary. Those who have already assembled, we ask your blessings upon them. Those who are watching us in the virtual space, we ask, oh God, that you would touch them in a mighty way. We have some members of our congregation who are dealing with with sickness and dealing with other issues. I ask your blessings upon Deacon Charlie Brown and Sister Lula Brown this morning. Your blessings upon Deacon J.B. Brown and Sister Nancy Brown. God, there are others who are dealing with life situations. You told us to pray about everything. And you told us in all things, give thanks. God, you don't change. You are the same. You're the same God. No matter the situations, no matter the circumstances, you are the same God. You're able to heal. You're able to deliver. You're able to mend broken hearts. You're able to dry tear-stained eyes. You're able to bring us through no matter what the situation. You remain the same. And we thank you. We love you. And we thank you for loving us. Even when we're unlovable, you keep on loving us and you love us without condition. And you tell us in your word that to love others as you have loved us. And so God, help us to love one another, to treat one another right. God, I pray your blessings upon this fellowship that we'll be what you're calling for us to be. That you'll be what, that will be what you want us to be. God, that we'll be a light in a dark world. That we can tell cinnamon man, woman, boy, girl about a man who can save, about a man who can deliver, who, about a man who's going to return one day for his church. And the Bible says he's coming for a church who's without spot, wrinkle, 
are blemished. So we lift our hands this morning. We raise our voices and we tell you thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for being so kind to us. Thank you for showing us mercy. Thank you for giving us grace. Thank you God for food on our table. Thank you God for clothes on our back. Thank you God for shoes on our feet. Thank you God for a roof over our head. Thank you God for help and strength. Thank you God. For being everything we need. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. And we give your name praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice uh, and be glad in it. It's a wonderful day. Uh, amen. It's a wonderful day uh, to be in the house of prayer and in the presence of of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. He did not have to wake us this morning, but we're thankful that he did. Amen. We're thankful that he did, and he has given us another opportunity to worship him and to worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, again, we welcome you, those of you uh, who have gathered here in the sanctuary and then those of you who are watching us uh, in the virtual space we thank God uh, for you we understand and realize that you could be anywhere else you could be uh, watching someone else we thank you for being a part of this service uh, and being here uh, with us this morning. Woke up this morning with my mind, my mind stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind, my mind stayed on the law. Woke up this morning with my mind, my mind stayed. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, yes, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind stayed. Yes, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind stayed on the law. Woke up this morning with my mind, my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm walking and talking with my mind. My mind stay. Yes, I'm walking and talking with my mind. My mind stayed on the law. Walking and talking with my mind. My mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, I'm singing and praying with my mind. My mind stay. Yes, I'm singing and praying with my mind. My mind stay on the law. Singing and praying with my mind. My mind stay. Yes, hallelujah. 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 Yes, it ain't no harm to keep your mind, your mind stay. Yeah, it ain't no harm to keep your mind, your mind stay on the law. Ain't no harm to keep your mind, your mind stay. Yes, hallelujah. 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 Come on, put your hands together. Hey, I woke up this morning with 
stay. Yes, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind stayed on the law. Woke up this morning with my mind, my mind stayed. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, it ain't no harm to keep your mind, your mind stay. Well, it ain't no harm to keep your mind, your mind stayed on the Ain't no harm to keep your mind, your mind stay. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Put your hands together. Oh, how marvelous 
us in his word he would take care of us shall we stand for our devotion I call your attention to second Timothy the fourth chapter Second Timothy, fourth chapter, starting at the thirteenth verse. And it reads The cloak that I left at Troas was with Capris. When thou comest, bring it with thee and the books, but especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou where also, for he had greatly withstood our word. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word. Shall we pray? Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning in the precious name of Jesus. Father God, we come thanking you for another chance and yet another opportunity. Father God, realizing that you could have allowed us to die in our sins a long time ago. But because of the love that you have for us, because of your grace and your mercy. Father, you just keep on giving us a chance. Chance after chance after chance. And Father God, we know that we promised that we was going to do the right thing and that we were going to get it right. But somehow, some way, as we desire to do the right thing, evil is pressing on every hand. But Father God, you said that if we just hold on, if we would just hold on, Father, that you would 
take care of the rest. Father God, we're praying. We're praying sincerely, Father, that you would hear our prayers and that you would have mercy and that you would have mercy on us, Father. Father God, we know that the enemy is busy. There's so much going on even in our little city right here, Father. But Father God, you said that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We know, Father, it looks a little dim sometimes. Father God, we know that it seems like all the world around us is trembling. But Father God, you said in your word, you promised us in your word, Father, if we would just stand on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ when it's all been said and done, we're going to be okay. And Father God, we thank you. We thank you in advance, Father. Father God, realizing that we can never thank you enough for all that you've done for us and all that you're doing for us, Father. But Father God, we thank you. We thank you from sincerely from our hearts, Father. Father God, we thank you for this choir. Father God, we ask that you would continue to bless them. And Father God, we ask that you would bless the leaders of the choir. Father God, we know that the enemy is trying to separate us, Father. He's trying his best to bring chaos. But Father God, we know that you have us right, right in the palm of your hands, Father. And Father God, we ask that you would bless our man of God that you have so richly provided for us. Father God, we just say yes to your word, Father. But Father God, we don't know what his vision is and how he gives it to him or what he does and what all that you're doing for our man of God. But Father God, we know that you are in control. Father God, even if he don't understand, you understand, Father. And Father God, we ask that you would give us strength to follow according to your word, Father. And Father God, we're praying for our congregation. But Father God, there are so many who are sick. So many are, are, are shut in today, Father. And Father God, there are so many who are shut in in their minds today, Father. Father God, we ask that you would touch them. But Father God, we know that the prophet says that when he went to church, everything was okay. He saw the world crumbling around him. But when he went to church, Father, and Father God, we're praying for that type of experience today, Father, that you would lift our spirits. And Father God, we know that we don't have to ask, but you said in your word that we should pray and pray without ceasing, Father. <clears throat> Father God, we're praying that you heal our prayers, Father. Father God, heal those who are sick in their minds in our church, Father. Who believe that the enemy says what he says when he says that we can stay at home and it's okay, Father. Father God, we ask that you would touch right now. Father God, right now, right now, Father. But Father God, we know that whatever we do in the name of Jesus shall last forever. And Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. amen. Come on, put 
chance of yelling us first out to me. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're gonna make it. God's gonna see you through. So hold your head up, put a smile on your face. This is another test. You've been hurting deep down inside But let me encourage you, it's gonna be alright The trouble, the trial, they come to make you strong Keep on believing, you keep holding on Get ready for your blessing Get ready for your miracle You've been hurting deep down inside But let me encourage you, it's gonna be alright The trouble, the trial, they come to make you strong Keep on believing, you keep holding on Get ready for your blessing Get ready for your I need everybody helping here today. Come on. Here we go. God's got a blessing. Yes, he does. God's got a blessing. Oh, yeah, yeah. God's got a blessing. Do you believe today God's got a blessing? God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Isn't it good to know that God is still in the blessing? Are you blessed this morning? Oh, come on, come on. Don't fool me. Don't fool me. Are you blessed this morning? Somebody else, I'm better than blessed. I am blessed. I'm better than, than blessed. When I, when I think of how God has kept me all week long. Yeah, yeah, how God, 
He's woke you up every day of the week. Amen. That's a blessing uh, from, from the Lord. We thank God for another day uh, and for another expression of his love uh, and his kindness uh, toward us. Just a few observations um, as we move uh, further in our services. Again, thank God for each and every one of you uh, who've assembled yourselves here uh, in the sanctuary. God bless you. God bless you for making your way to church. Amen. Amen. And then to those of you who are watching us in the virtual space uh, and on our website, we we thank you uh, for being a part of our worship experience. I ask your prayers uh, for uh, Deacon Charlie Brown and Sister Lula Brown, uh, for Deacon J.B. Brown and Sister Nancy Brown, uh, for Deacon Pettis and Sister Pettis. We ask your blessings upon uh, them. Um, there's a number of uh, others uh, whose names uh, uh, are, are, are not coming to me, but uh, we ask your prayers for all of our family, our church family, amen, uh, as we deal with life uh, and life issues. Uh, my grandma would always say, uh, today may not be your day, uh, <laughs> but at some point, if you keep on living, uh, you'll need somebody to pray for you, amen. Uh, and so while others are dealing with their uh, issues. The Bible says that the strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Amen. Uh, and so we ask your prayers for those individuals. I uh, wanted uh, to remind you as well that just briefly after service, we're going to have uh, just a short brief meeting uh, for our members. So we ask you to stay uh, just for a few moments. Uh, our, our finance team is going to kind of give us uh, a, a, a layout of where we are uh, financially up until this point. We are uh, in July, the seventh month of the year, uh, and uh, we just want you to know where we are at halftime. Amen? <laughs> we want you to know where we are at halftime, and we'll say a bit about um, a few other things, and then we will we will let you let you go. Um, I think uh, I think that's that's all. I don't know. School is approaching fast, and and uh, we want to uh, start to get our children in school routine. Amen. Amen. Uh, if yours are like mine, they've been staying up all night long. Uh, and it's time to get back into the habit of going to bed. Amen. Getting up early, going to school. Amen. <laughs> so we we want to uh, definitely be praying for them. Listen, COVID numbers are still are uh, going up. There's another variant uh, that's out, uh, and they're saying that the, the boosters and the vaccines ain't stopping it. Um, it's done. It's done um, uh, you may not get uh, as ill uh, without having a vaccine, uh, but if you need boosters, go get your boosters. Amen. Amen. And if you hadn't been vaccinated, get vaccinated. Uh, your symptoms, if you get COVID, uh, won't be as severe uh, as what studies are showing if you've been vaccinated and boosted and those kinds of things. Uh, wear your mask inside is what they're recommending. Uh, COVID isn't going anywhere, so we have to do what we have to do to deal with it. Amen. Uh, if not for yourself, then for the protection of others. Um, there are others who are dealing with other health issues uh, that COVID will compound. Uh, so if not for yourself, uh, do it for the, the health and the safety uh, of of others. Look to your left, look to your right, tell somebody you're glad to see them. Come on, put a step, yeah, tell them, tell them, tell them you're glad, you're glad to see them. Uh, and we thank God for another, another, another day. Amen. Amen. Come on. We we'll encourage the voices of steeple as they come. Okay.
To save you, hear my arm, oh, cry. While on others thou art calling, Savior, do not pass. Me by. I'm calling you Savior, Savior, why don't you hear my arm, oh, cry, oh, why don't others die? Are calling Savior to not pass me by. I'm calling you Savior, 
Savior, why don't you hear my arm? Me by Lord, we thank you. We give your name praise. It's preaching time. We need to hear a word from you. Speak now, Lord. Your people are listening. God, we pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, would be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are our strength, our redeemer. We thank you for another chance. To stand and proclaim your word. God, I am frail. I am not worthy, but thank you for using me. God, we ask now that you would pour us down blessings from heaven as we continue to live your name. It is these blessings and other blessings we ask. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Second Timothy. Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and begin reading at verse 16, 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at verse 16, if you have it, say amen, amen. says, at my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them, but the Lord. Don't read that too fast. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. And God keep you. Thank you so much for standing to honor the reading of God's word. We continue uh, with our series on dealing with your mental state. Last week we talked about depression. This week's sermon is centered around loneliness. I want to tag this text with this thought. You are not alone. You are not alone. Would you look to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, you are not alone. If you have never experienced any moments of loneliness, might I suggest to you this morning, you may not be human. According to psychology today, loneliness depends entirely on the subjective quality of one's relationship whether they provide emotional or social connection. 
Loneliness, my brothers and sisters, increases blood pressure. It increases your cholesterol. And it activates one's physical and psychological stress responses. Chronic loneliness increases early death by 14%. It is estimated, my brothers and sisters, that 40% of us will feel the aching pangs of loneliness at some point in our lives. Loneliness does not depend on how many friends or relationships you have. You do know you can be in a room filled with people and still feel alone you can be among family and friends and still feel lonely because loneliness depends entirely on the subjective quality of relationships on whether you feel emotionally and are socially disconnected from those around you that is why more than 60% of lonely people are married. When I was doing research, it shocked me too. 60% of lonely people are married. When married couples no longer share their feelings and thoughts and experiences with one another it can leave them feeling disconnected and alone people in such relationships truly believe their spouse cannot offer them the deep connection they would like they spend more time talking to their girlfriends and their homies than they do each other While their fears might be correct, they might also stem from the fact that loneliness distorts our perception of our relationships. Studies have found that merely asking people to recall the times they felt lonely was sufficient to make them devalue their relationships. These perceptual distortions often cause lonely people to withdraw even further from the very people who could alleviate their loneliness. And since it is a fact that we will all experience loneliness, and loneliness is a devastating psychological condition. We need to know how to deal with our mental state. This message this morning is tailored to teach us you need to know God is present. Even when life makes us feel like we're all alone, God is present. And in our text this morning, Paul helps us and gives us reasons as to how he was able and you and I are able to deal with lonely situations. Look at it. Paul, Paul, Sister Hill, Paul, the one who wrote more than half of the New Testament. Paul, perhaps the greatest mind in the New Testament. Paul, one of the most spiritual men we know. He's a spiritual giant. This morning is dealing with a deep sense of isolation and loneliness, which says to me and you, you can be spiritual. You can be saved and still feel like you're by yourself. I wish I had some help in here. He, he, he writes this letter, uh, Sister Ruffins, he writes this letter to Timothy uh, from his damp prison cell in Rome and tells Timothy to come to me quickly because he longs for the companionship of a friend. It won't be long before Paul is executed 
and his need, he, his, and his need for a companion to ease his loneliness was an urgent need. One of the reasons Paul is alone this morning is because his friends has left him. He calls them by name. You go back up a little bit uh, in the chapter. He says, Demas has fallen in love with the world and deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. He says, Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Paul says, Tychias has gone to Ephesus. Everybody has left him except Luke. Paul speaks of Alexander the coppersmith. He writes that Alexander did him great harm and that the Lord will repay him according to his deeds. We don't know what Alexander did to Paul. But he says to you and me that we don't have to get people back when they do us wrong. Oh, Y'all go help me up in here this morning. The Lord can deal with them better than we can. You, you don't have to hunt down the lie they told, the knife they put in your back, the loose lips that's telling your business. The Lord will repay them according to their deeds. Bible says let the wheat and the tear grow together. God will do the separation. Paul tells Timothy, you beware of Alexander too, for he strongly opposed our message. I'm in the Bible. That's verse 15. Look at what Paul says. He says, he says, my brother, sister, brother Frenchie, he says, at my first defense, no one came to stand by me. That, that, that word stand means uh, to be present together. It carries the idea of association, to be beside, to arrive. Paul says, no one was present. My associates were nowhere to be found. Nobody arrived on my behalf. Paul goes before what we know as a grand jury. In a court of law, you have the prosecution and the defense. It, it is the job of the prosecution to present evidence to convict someone of wrongdoing. The defense's job is to give evidence as to why the defendant isn't guilty. They say stuff like, if it doesn't fit, You must acquit. Sometimes they call Sister Porter character witnesses. Paul says, I was looking, I was waiting for my character witnesses to show up and to stand beside me. I was waiting on someone to arrive. I thought they would be present, but they all forsook me. They deserted me. It's the same word Jesus uses on the cross when he says, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? It, it reminds us of what happened to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when his disciples deserted him when he was arrested. Beloved, you will find out who your real friends are when you get in trouble and need some help. Y'all going to make me work this morning. Paul, Paul is not in trouble for doing anything wrong. Don't y'all miss this. Paul is not in trouble for doing anything wrong. He's in jail, watch this, for preaching the gospel. Let me say this parenthetically and throw this in the gumbo while I'm cooking good. Uh, see, 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 sharing the gospel will get you in trouble. 
I can't get no amens. And, 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 and that may, Jerry, and that may be the reason many professed Christians don't share their faith is because they don't want to get in trouble. Watch this. A according to Lifeway Research, only three in ten unchurched Americans, that's 30%, Say a Christian has ever shared with them one on one how a person becomes a Christian. Only slightly more say a Christian has told them about the benefits of participating in a local church. That's 33%. Or, or, or the benefits of becoming a Christian. 35%. Four in ten unchurched Americans, they've never had a Christian explain. Any of these things to them. I know they want you to believe it's always glitz and glamour. But I want to warn you that the gospel could cause loneliness, jail time, and possibly your life. But I hear Jesus saying, whoever loses their life, for my sake, I wish I had some Bible folk. We'll find it talking about talking about Jesus, my brothers and sisters, unfortunately, could cause us to stand by ourselves. And might I submit to you this morning, if sharing the gospel has never got you in trouble, you ain't been sharing it. Ah, uh, sharing the gospel got Paul locked up and left by himself. Following Jesus is dangerous business. Y'all quiet. That, 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 that's, why, that's why he said, count up the cost. I, I ain't making it up. It's, it, it's in your Bible if you ain't cut it out. Following Jesus will have you facing fiery furnaces. Following Jesus will have you dealing with a lion's den. Following Jesus will have you carrying a cross. Look what he says. If any man will follow me, he must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me daily. The hymn writer put it this way. Must Jesus bear? Cross alone. And all the world go free. No, there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. Disowned on earth mid grief and cares. He led his toesome way. But now in heaven a crown he wears and reigns in endless day. Jesus will tell uh, Jesus will tell you that following God's plan for your life will have you hanging on the cross for crimes you did not commit but it will also get you a crown. Paul said they all left me. But may it not be charged against them. Paul wasn't vindictive. He wasn't mad. He didn't hold a grudge. I'm sure he was hurt because no one showed up for him. But he said, don't hold it against them. And my brothers and sisters, I thought I would tell you, quit getting upset and bitter when people walk out of your life. You ought to thank God, some folk, are no longer in your life. You talking about you can't live without them, the devil is a lie. You, you, you know, brother, they thought, if, if, if I can't have you, nobody, listen, listen, baby, if you want to go, life goes on. Don't you shrivel up and die because somebody walked out, live, look at somebody and tell them, live, live, live. 
I, I know they hurt you. But, but healing will take place. You're trying to hold on to someone who gives you 15 minutes of happy feelings every once in a while. But you singing, I'm catching hell every other moment you with them. Can I let you in on a secret? This is going to be deep. Watch this. If they left, that means they weren't meant to stay. Can, 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 can I tell you what you do? Go, go, go to the store. And, and, and buy you some thank you cards. <laughs> Write them a message and tell them, thank you for walking out of my life because now that you're gone, it makes room for what God wants me to have and then sign it sincerely. Problem is, so the market problem is, some of us, bro Hamilton, are afraid to be alone with ourselves. Because when you are alone with yourself, you get to see who you really are. So, some of us got to be in the crowd. And got to have a lot of folk around us because you're you scared to be by yourself. Uh, have you considered maybe God wanted you to be alone so you could deal with you? The problem is not always other people. Sometimes the problem and the person I need to deal with is me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When it seems, let me press my way and move on. When, when, when it seems we're all alone and in situations by ourselves, Paul gives us some reminders to help us through. Paul, he tells Timothy, first of all, the Lord stood. It's there in verse 17. Paul says in verse 16, at my first offense, no one came to stand by me, but in verse 17, he says, but the Lord stood by me. Y'all missed it. You, you read the Bible too fast. In verse 16, uh, he says, no one came to stand. In verse 17, he says, but the Lord stood. Dig it here, there's a difference between standing and stood. Paul says, at my first defense, no one came by my side. And when it looked like I was alone and by myself, the Lord took his stand by my side. Uh, the Lord showed up. The Lord appeared. Perhaps that's just where the Lord wanted Paul and wants us alone so that he can show up. Uh, Y'all gonna help me this morning. Uh, Paul, Paul knew. Uh, is there anybody in here who knows that he will show up? And he, when he shows up, he shows out. And when he shows up, he's not too early. He's not too late. But he's always... Paul, Paul, Paul knew. Paul knew something, Sister Kirkendall, about the stoodness. That's, that's a Dixon word. That's not going to be found. In, in the, don't, don't go looking in the dictionary looking for stoodness. That's, that's a Dixon word, stoodness. God knew about the stoodness of, of, of the Lord. He, because the Lord had stood with him so many times. On, on one occasion in Acts 23, after Paul had been before the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Scripture says, the Lord stood by him. Is there anybody here who knows about the stoodness of God? 
I thought I'd get some witnesses when you were caught between the proverbial rock and hard place. The Lord stood. When you were right, the Lord stood. When you were wrong, the Lord stood. And now you find yourself in this lonely place, but you ain't tripping because the Lord stood by you before and he'll do it again. Look at somebody tell them, don't trip. The Lord stood. Paul tells us when friends wouldn't stand with me because of fear. When it looked like I was by myself, the Lord stood. The Lord was my defense attorney. Ain't no greater attorney to have than to have the Lord defending you. Thank God Jesus is our advocate. And when you stand for him, I wish I had a witness. Anybody here know he'll stand for you. Uh, the Lord stood. And then Paul says, secondly, the Lord strengthens. Is that in your Bible? Uh, he says, the Lord not only stood, but he also strengthened me. He empowered me. The Lord's presence, the Lord's appearing put strength in me. Paul would tell us and encourage us that when we are at our weakest, then we are strong. Because God's power can be displayed in our lives. Paul would tell us this morning, we can do all things. I wish I had some Bible folk. Through Christ who gives us. Somebody want to know, how do I make it when I've done the right thing? I'm out here on God's word and still find myself in a lonely place and seemingly by myself. I wish I had some witnesses that would help me encourage somebody this morning by telling them I've been where you are. And the reason I made it is because the Lord kept pouring his power to me if you're going to make it through loneliness life's difficult situations and fulfill God's purposes for our lives we need to be connected to the power source in a, in a, in a seminary missions class Herbert Jackson told how as a new missionary he was assigned a car that would not start without a push. After pondering his problem, he devised a plan. He went to the school near his home, got permission to take some children out of class and had them push his cough. As he made his rounds, he would either park on a hill or leave the engine running. He used this ingenuous Procedure for two years. Ill health forced the Jackson family to leave. And a new missionary came to that station. And when Jackson proudly began to explain his arrangement for getting the car started, the man began looking under the hood. Before the explanation was complete, the new missionary interrupted, Why, Dr. Jackson? I believe the only trouble is this loose cable. He gave the cable a twist, stepped into the car, pushed the switch, and to Jackson's astonishment, the engine roared to life. For two years, needless trouble had become routine. The power was there all the time. 
Only a loose connection kept Jackson from putting that power to work. Uh, J.V. Phillips paraphrases Ephesians 1, 19 through 20 that says, how tremendous is the power available to us who believe in God. When we make a firm, when we make a firm our connection with God, his life and power flow through us. Look at your neighbor and tell them, make sure your connection ain't loose. You, you, you need God. God's power is available, but we must have a strong connection. That's why prayer is so important for the believer. You, you got to spend time in prayer. Paul, Paul says, the Lord stood and gave me strength. Watch this. So that through me, the message might be fully proclaimed. Paul changes his perspective and says the reason God has me in this position is because he's given me the courage and the opportunity to share the gospel message. Beloved, that's why you are where you are because God wants to use your life and this situation for his glory. Listen, I, I, I don't make light of how you feel. I know it might be tough right now. But God wants to use your situation as an opportunity for you to share the gospel message. He, he wants to use your life as a testimony. To others of his grace, his mercy, and his peace toward us. In every situation, good, bad, dark, bleak, here's what you ought to do. Preach the gospel. Somebody say, ain't no preacher. Yes, y'all. You don't need to stand behind this desk to preach. The Bible says, you shall be my witnesses. I wish I had a witness. He, 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 he tells the disciples, not the bishops and just the pastors. He, he talks to the disciples. He says, go ye therefore. And, and what is a disciple? A disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. So are you a follower? If you are a follower, then you have a job to proclaim the gospel message. Preach the gospel. Somebody needs to hear when you're lonely, he's a company keeper. When you're sick, he's a healer. Uh, when, when you're broke, he's money in your pocket. When you're heartbroken, he is a heart mender. When you are confused, he's a man regulator. Yeah, Granny said he's bread. When I'm hungry, he, I wish I had a church. He, he's water when I'm thirsty. I'm trying to tell you, uh, is don't fret because you're in a difficult place. God wants to use it for his glory. I'm done. The Lord stood. You, you do need to know about the stoodness. Y'all make sure y'all kick that word down. The stoodness. Stoodness of the Lord. And then the Lord strengthened me. And then finally, my brothers and sisters, the Lord saves. <laughs> the Lord say, I thought I'd get some, some amens right there. The Lord saves. Paul says, I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Theologians and scholars debate the interpretation of who Paul was speaking of. Some interpreters believe Paul was referring to Nero, whose ferocity uh, had increased toward Christians. Other believe the lion 
uh, was Satan who lies behind all schemes against the gospel and God followers. Perhaps Paul was speaking of those accusers who stood before him in the court or even death itself that was cheated one more time. Whatever the lion represents, the one point Paul was making was that God delivered him. I believe Paul is rejoicing over the fact that the Lord delivered him one more time. Don't miss your shout this morning. Tell somebody, the devil thought he had me. Yeah. Devil thought he had me, but I got away. Thought he had me with this one, but 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 I got away one more time. He he tricked and schemed and tried to use my friends and associates to make me fearful. But the Lord delivered me one more time. I'm done. Paul said, the Lord saved me. The Lord rescued me the Lord delivered me this time and the Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his kingdom Paul knew the next time he went to trial the outcome could not be favorable he knew his death was imminent but Paul says one day the Lord will deliver me from every evil deed. Paul says, I'm on my way to glory. And uh, there, finally, uh, I'll be free from all evil. Can't you hear him saying, uh, to live is Christ, but to die uh, is gain. And that's the hope for every believer. One day uh, the Lord is coming uh, to take us back with him to the place that uh, he has uh, prepared for us. And I won't have to worry about being lonely. I won't have to worry uh, about sickness. I won't have to worry about disease. I won't have to worry uh, about the things that come with getting old. I won't have to worry uh, about people mistreating me. I won't have to worry about people digging ditches, throwing rocks, and hiding their hands. The Lord will deliver me. I'm going home where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest I'm going home where there's no more sadness and no more goodbyes every day will be howdy howdy and the Sabbath will have no end and when you come to at the end of life's journey you'll be able to say like Paul for I'm already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand I fought the good fight I finished the race I've kept the faith henceforth now now there's laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the righteous judge 
will give to me on that day you'll be able to express the sentiments of Lucy Campbell if when you give your best of service telling the world that the Savior is come be not dismayed when men don't believe you he'll understand and say well done but if you try and fail in your trying hands sore and scarred from the work you've begun take up your cross run quickly to meet him he'll understand and say well done oh when I've come to the end of my journey weary of life and battle is won carrying the staff and the cross of redemption he'll understand and say well done is there anybody here who want to hear him say well done Oh sucks well done yeah is that anybody here wanna hear him say servant well done well done shout yes yeah shout yes I gotta go, gotta go. Thank you, thank you that you stood for me. Thank you that you gave me strength. Thank you that you saved me. Thank you that one of these days he's coming back to take me with him. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor I don't know what it done for you I don't know where it brought you from but there's one thing that I know and I'll leave you alone I know he's all right You are not alone. The Lord stood. The Lord strengthens. And the Lord saves. The door of the church is open. I want you to know. Makes no difference what situation you find yourself in. Sometimes friends, family, associates, they'll leave you. But sometimes that's just where God wants you to be. His power can be displayed in your life. Sometimes he has to get us alone to deal with us. But the Lord will stand. The Lord will give you strength. The Lord will save you. The Bible says that in every temptation, he provides a way of escape. You can quit saying, I couldn't help myself. I, I, I just had to. No, there's, there's always a way. I want to encourage you today. When it looks like you're all by yourself, God is present. 
He says, I'm a very present help in the time of trouble. He's there even when sometimes you can't feel him. You got to learn to trust him when you can't trace him. And remember this. Teachers are always silent during the test. Teachers are always silent during the test. He wants to make sure That you know what you say you know. A test is to test your knowledge of what's been taught. We always say this, no test, no testimony. We extend an invitation today for those who haven't made him Lord of your life. We extend an invitation for you to come by letter Christian experience or as a candidate for baptism. We extend an invitation to those who are saved but you're looking for a church home. We would love to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. We would love for you to be a part of this fellowship. This is the moment of decision. We've done what the Lord has asked us and told us to do this morning. Now it is your decision. If you're watching us virtually, you can inbox us. You can call us. You can let us know what your desire is. But this is the chance. This is the opportunity. We know not the day nor the hour when the Lord will appear, but he does say as he's coming back, and he's coming like a thief in the night. You ought to be ready when he comes. God bless you, and God keep you is our prayer. Will you put your hands together and give the Lord <laughs> amen. So were you helped by the message today? Were you blessed by the message? The Lord stood, the Lord strengthens, and the Lord saves. I pray. Uh, that you were blessed by the message. It's offering time. It's offering time. Amen. Offering time. It's time to give. Do you know that giving is a part of worship? Amen. The Lord has been so good to us uh, in that he has given us something to give. And we want to honor him with our Giving. There are multiple ways uh, to give. You can text to give, 318 924 3008. You can cash app us at dollar sign steeplechase BC. Uh, if you're watching online, there's a Give Now tab. You can click that tab. It'll take you to our Easy Tithe logging platform and you can give there. Um, if you're giving in a traditional means, you can leave your Offering in the buckets in the back when you exit the sanctuary. Mail your gift to 7016 Steeplechase Plaza Drive, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71129. Or you can drop your gift off here at the church and someone from the finance team will be available to receive your gift. Whatever way you decide to give uh, this morning, uh, we ask that you give cheerfully. The Lord loves a what? He loves a cheerful giver, and he says, if you're going to give it grudgingly, keep it in your pocket. The Bible says if you uh, sow sparingly, y'all read that too? You will reap uh, sparingly. We don't beg anybody to give. Uh, we don't compel anybody out of compulsion to give. You ought to give because God has given to you. Uh, and watch this, he's given us more than what we need. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. 
Listen, if your be listen, folk are paying four, five, six hundred dollar light bills. If you've been able to pay your light bill, your water bill, your mortgage, and still have some money left over, he's given you more than enough. I quit complaining about gas prices. And I Lord, I thank you I can stop at the gas pump and get gas. And still be able to do some of the stuff I want to do. Ain't that a good God? <laughs> and so we ought to bless him with our gifts. Lord, we thank you for this offering. We thank you that you sustained us through so much. God, food prices are high. Gas prices are high. All our bills are gone up. But you are rich. Our, our Bible and, and, and you teach us that you own everything. We are your children. And so we thank you for being our provider. We thank you for giving us the means to give. And we bless this your house that your house may not go lacking. I ask now, God, that you would open windows of heaven and pour out blessings we don't have room to receive. Thank you. And we give your name praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And God keep you is our prayer. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise again. Thank you so much to those of you who gathered here uh, today in the sanctuary and, uh, and blessed us with your presence. Thank you so, so very much uh, for being a part of the worship experience. And we don't forget those who watch us virtually uh, and uh, bless us with their presence as well. Remember to keep praying uh, for the Browns, uh, uh, Charlie and Luther and uh, Deacon JB and uh, Sister Nancy. We want to definitely keep them in our prayers. And again, the Pettis family want to keep them in our prayers as, as well. God bless you. Lord, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this time uh, that we've been able to share together.